So we're now going to have a look at how you can do some calculations. So when you want to do calculations using half-lives, usually the first thing that you need to do is change the total time passed that you've been given into the number of half-lives that have passed. And that you will do with this equation, which says the number of half-lives is equal to the total time passed divided by the length of one half-life. Once you've got the number of half-lives, then you can find out the proportion of nuclei remaining by doing a half to the power of the number of half-lives, or by doing a half times 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 a half for however many half-lives that you've got. But it's much quicker putting it into the calculator as a half to the power of however many half-lives it is. And the mass of the radioactive isotope and the activity or count rate are all directly proportional to the number of nuclei, so decrease in exactly the same way. Now, this may not be that clear yet, but don't worry because we're going to do several examples. But pause the video now and make a note of the information on this slide. And then once you've done that, continue the video and we'll look at some examples. For this first example, we are told that we've got 100,000 technetium-99m nuclei and technetium-99m has a half-life of six hours and we're asked how many undecayed nuclei or how many radioactive nuclei will remain after 24 hours. So as we said, step one is to work out how many half-lives have passed. So to do that, we need to do the total time divided by the time for one half-life and in this case, the total time was 24 hours and one half-life was six hours. So we'll do 24 divided by six, which will give us four half-lives. And there's no unit to this because it's a ratio of two times. So four half-lives have passed. So then to find out how many of our 100,000 nuclei remain, we can do a half to the power 4 times 100,000 and pop that into a calculator. Or if we preferred, we could do a half times a half times a half times a half, four times times 100,000 and to get the number that remain in that way. But either way, that's going to come out at 6,250 nuclei remaining. The first way is much quicker if you've got a larger number of half-lives. If it's two or three or four half-lives, it's fine to put it into the calculator like this. But if it's ten half-lives, it's going to be much quicker this way. So that was our first example, and you might like to make a note of that into your notes. And then when you're ready, there are some further examples for you to have a go at. OK, so we've got these questions for you to try now. And maybe if you try the first questions, and then when you've had a go at those, you can continue the video and we'll review those. And then you can have a little bit more time to try the trickier question two, and then we'll review those. So pause the video and have a go at question one, A, B and C. Now we're ready to review questions one, A, B and C. Um, the first thing to do is to work out the number of half-lives that have passed. And for that, we're just going to do the total time over the time of one half-life, which for this will be the total time of 16 days. And the one half-life was eight days, which tells us that we've had two half-lives. Once we have got the fact that we have two half-lives, then we can <coughs> state that the number remaining will equal our initial number times 
times by a half for the first half-life and a second half for the second half-life or I like to write it as a general thing general equation which would be the initial number times a half to the power the number of half-lives that we've had which would be a half to the power 2 in this case times our 1 million nuclei so I can then pop that into the calculator which will give us uh, 1 million nuclei times 0 0.5 to be our half and then use the power button 2 which would give me 250,000 because it's only two half-lives it's not that difficult to multiply it by a half and then by a half again but if it was more like 10 half-lives that would be pretty tedious and doing the half to the power 10 would be better. So that gave us 250,000 nuclei. In part B, it follows exactly the same pattern that <clears throat> we work out the number of half-lives as the 32 days divided by the length of one half-life, which gives us four, and then the number remaining will be the one million times by a half to the power four, because it was four half-lives, which would give us 62,500. This last one is a bit of a nasty one, because it says, how long will it take for there to be less than 5% of the original number of nuclei left? So this is a bit of a trial and error. If we do a half to the power four, that would give us 0 0.0625 of the original number which would give us 6.25%. If it was five half-lives, that would be a half to the power five, which would give us 0.031 or 3.1% of the original. So less than 5% implies that it's going to be between four and five half-lives. So you might estimate it at 36 days. With some A-level maths or called logarithms, you can work out the exact answer, which in this case would come out to 34.6 days, but that's actually beyond anything you'd be expected to do at Physics GCSE. So that completes questions 1, A, B and C. Now see if you can have a go at question 2, A and B, <clears throat> to work out the mass of americium that would be left after a certain amount of time. So pause the video now and try question 2, A and B. Don't be too worried if you can't do B, as this is a bit of a challenge question. Now the great thing about half-life calculations is it works the same way whether you're given the starting mass, the starting number, or the starting activity, or the starting count rate. So the first step is always to work out how many half-lives have passed. So the number of half-lives is going to equal the total time divided by <coughs> uh, the time of one half-life, which in this case the total time is going to be 1296 over 432 and I can either do the mental maths or do that on a calculator and <clears throat> that gives me uh, three half-lives. So I now know that three half-lives uh, have passed, so I can do the mass remaining will be the initial mass, or the starting mass, times by, and then I can keep multiplying it by a half until I've done that for the number of half-lives. So I could do a half times a half times a half, for one, two, three half-lives, or more simply, I could do the initial mass times a half to the power, in this case, three for my three half-lives, but this would be whatever the number of half-lives was, which should give me 0 0.05 grams times <coughs> 0 0.5 to the power three. So let's pop that in on the calculator. So I've got 0 0.05 grams times 0 0.5 to the power three, and that gives me a fraction, but obviously I don't want that as a fraction, which is going to give me 6.25 times 10 to the minus 3 
grams and I think because my data was really only to one significant figure that I definitely can't justify more than two so I'm going to round that to 6.3 times 10 to the minus 3 grams as my final answer. So <clears throat> um, in part B is actually not really any harder except now when I work out the number of half-lives I don't get an integer number. So the number of half-lives will be the total time divided by the time of one half-life which is 1,500 years divided by 432 and now when I work this out 1,500 divided by 432 I find that it is 3.47 half-lives. So um, the good thing about using this equation on your calculator is that you can still um, do the calculation when you don't have an integer number of half-lives. So I can still do mass remaining is going to equal the starting or initial mass times by half to the power the number of half-lives, which is going to be the 3.47. So that's going to be 0 0.05 grams times 0 0.5 to the power 3.47. And so I can pop that into the calculator, or 0 0.05 grams times 0 0.5 to the power. And because I've got that stored in my calculator, I can do the ANTS, press equals, and now I have got, oops, move that off, uh, I've got 4.5 times 10 to the minus 3 grams remaining. And as mentioned at the start of the video, it doesn't really matter whether you're given the starting mass, the starting number of nuclei, the starting number of count rate, or the starting activity, the maths of it, the method of it all works out to be the same.